The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. So, uh, my name's Kern Kelleher. I'll be lecturing today about recursion and fractals. Uh, Justin Curry's not here today, so I'm going to fill in. So um, today I'm going to just do a bunch of example programs, computer programs that are recursive. Some of them don't make pictures, and some of them do. And when they make pictures, they're fractals. Frax fractals are things that are self-similar at different scales that you can zoom in on. Um, we're going to take a break at 4 o'clock for 10 minutes. And then towards the end, hopefully, I'll show you a bunch of examples of fractals and play some Bach music. So first of all, um, Let's consider um, a re uh, recursive mathematical function, uh, factorial. Uh, something factorial, like 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, and 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So like, and this, this is factorial, the exclamation point. So. Um, the way this is defined is actually recursive. So if you take anything factorial, say n factorial is n minus 1 factorial, um, say, say n is 4, and then n minus 1 would be 3. So 4 factorial is, wait, n yeah, times n. So it's going to be well, n, n times n minus 1 factorial. So 4 is n times this whole thing is 3 factorial. It's n minus 1 factorial. So this is a recursive definition. And if you look in the handout, um, I wrote a little computer program on page 3, I think, that, that does the factorial. So it goes like this. So just some, for, for those of you who don't know much about programming, uh, def means define. So we're defining a function called factorial. And it takes as an argument n. So you can call this function pass it a number. And inside the function, it's referred to as n. So fact, this factorial function says, if n is greater than 1, return n times factorial of n minus 1. Else, return 1. So what makes this function recursive is the fact that it calls itself. Factorial is defined as n times factorial of something else. So a recursive function is a function that calls itself. Um, so maybe an example. So if, if n is 5, say, um, the way we call this is we say factorial Of five, so when we when we say this, it calls this function and gives n the number five. So it's, what it's going to do is so n is going to be five. So n is greater than one. So we return n times factorial of n minus one. So say we're doing this algorithm. Uh, five is n. So we're going to return five times factorial of n minus one. So we call factorial with the value four. And uh, that's also greater than 1. So we return 4 times factorial of 3. So 5 times uh, 4 times factorial of 3. So we loop, we call itself uh, a bunch of times until we get down to 1. So that's what actually ends up happening. 
this is recursion. So another simple example, which is sort of like the factorial, is um, the Fibonacci numbers, Fibonacci sequence. So the Fibonacci numbers, um, it goes 1, 1, and then the next one you add the first two together. So it goes 1, 1, 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, and so on, 8, blah, blah, blah. These are the Fibonacci numbers. So this is a recursive definition. Uh, let's say this is... These, this is like the number of the element. Like they're just numbers, index, indices, if you will. So Fibonacci of 2 is Fibonacci of 0 plus Fibonacci of 1. And so Fibonacci 5 is going to be Fibonacci of 3 plus Fibonacci of 4. So generally, Fibonacci of n is going to be Fibonacci of n minus 1 plus Fibonacci of n minus 2. So. We could say that here. Instead of factorial, we call it Fibonacci. And we'll notice that like they're almost the same thing. I'll say fib. If n minus if, if n is greater than one, we return Fibonacci of n minus one. And this gives us the Fibonacci numbers, actually. Uh, does that make sense to you guys? So uh, on the, in the handout, there are some example outputs of both of these. And you can see that's what happens. Uh, so um, who has their copy of Gödel Escher Bach today? So if we will look on page 132 of Gödel Escher Bach, Oh, no, no, I can't look at it. Oh, well. 132 of Gödel Escher Bach has these two diagrams that are recursive transition networks. They define a grammar, like, sort of like English. It's not English, it's not complete. It's, it's a simplified version of English. But he communicates the essence of the, the notion of a grammar, a recursive grammar. So you'll notice that. Um, it's hard to do it in my head. Fancy noun. One of the nodes calls fancy noun again. It loops back out on itself. So this is where the recursion is. So what I did is I took this, this diagram and wrote a little computer program that um, whenever there's a choice of the transitions, it chooses one of those transitions at random. And um, this is the program I wrote. I think it's on page five of my handout. So if you look at that, um, yeah, I wish I had the projector. It's unfortunate. Um, actually, can I look at the diagram? So if you look at fancy noun, we begin, and it calls ordinate noun. And then if you look at the program in the handout, um, you find fancy noun. It's sort of halfway down. It says the RTN for fancy noun. Fancy noun equals, and this is a function call. Well, first of all, fancy noun equals, when you put curly braces around something, it, it makes it a function, pretty much. So fancy noun equals, uh, and, and it copies pretty much directly from the diagram. Ornate noun 